Okay, I hear the recording in progress. So, share the screen. Okay, so we're on uh, 4.7. I should be pretty close to finishing 4.7 today. Okay, so we only have 4.8 and 4.9 left to do for this chapter. Okay, so Friday, I'll give you another quiz. And the Friday after that, November the 5th, seems looks like it's exam four. Okay, this is our longest chapter, review of trig. And the chapters after that are not very long at all. So chapter five is only three sections. So let me get this into focus here. On exponential and log equations. Okay, so hopefully that's not too bad. Okay, so I'm on 4.7, a reminder. We're skipping problem 27 and 29 from 4.7. All right, so I'll do some more problems in 4.7. If I have time, I may go back to a previous section and do something from over there because it has been requested. All right, so problem 21. Show that the sine of pi minus t is equal to the sine of t. So I'm using the formula sine of a minus b is sine a cosine b minus cosine a sine b. Put all these formulas on your cheat sheet. So sine of pi minus t, using this formula sine of pi cosine t minus cosine pi sine of t. So pi radians is over here. The ordered pair is negative one zero. So that means the sine of pi is zero y coordinate, cosine of pi is negative one x coordinate. So I have zero times cosine t minus a negative one times sine of t, and that leaves me with sine of t. So it works. Okay, so that's that one. <clears throat> okay, we had some identity problems. So problem 31, verify the identity. In other words, show that the left side and the right side are equal. And the way I want you to do it, and I'll take off points if you don't do it, okay? draw a line down the equal sign. It's meant to be an impenetrable barrier. You don't cross. Okay? The only time you cross is when you get the left side and the right side to match. Okay, a good technique for problems like this is to change everything to sines and cosines. So one minus cosine squared, I know is sine squared x. Secant squared x is the reciprocal of the cosine. So I write this as one over cosine squared x. And then that times that is sine squared x over cosine squared x. And then the right side, I know tangent squared is sine squared x over cosine squared x. So there it is, they're equal. Okay. And then problem 35, well, there's really nothing to do on the left-hand side. Just cosine x is sine x sine two x plus cosine x cosine two x. I'm only gonna work on this side. There's nothing to do on this side. So here the impenetrable barrier is like that, so to speak. <clears throat> okay, I have a formula for this and I have a formula for this. So we'll just write them out. Sine X times sine of two X by formula, two sine X cosine X, put those on your cheat sheet. Plus cosine X and then cosine two X, there's actually three forms. One of which is cosine squared X minus sine squared X. Again, there's nothing to do here, it's just cosine x. Okay, so this is two sine squared x cosine x plus cosine cubed x minus cosine x sine squared x. Okay, then I factored out a cosine x. This gives me two sine squared x plus cosine squared x minus sine squared x. And then I notice these two give me sine squared x plus cosine squared x. And sine squared x plus cosine squared x is one. So indeed I do have just cosine x. So the left side and the right side do indeed match. Okay. Reminder, you wanna put all these formulas on your cheat sheet for the next test. Okay. Although I give you my variety of it, it's pretty much the same. So page 239, Pythagorean identities. Okay, it's easier if you write it sine squared plus cosine squared, that's traditional for most textbooks. Um, there's nothing wrong with this per se, but then you have to keep writing parentheses. 
Okay, one plus tangent squared x is secant squared x. One plus cotangent squared x is cosecant x. Cotangent cosecant squared x. Okay, sum and difference formulas. Okay, I don't really like x1 and x2. I did a and b, but technically this is correct. <clears throat> And well, this kind of combines it already. So we already saw these. And then the double angle formulas, page 244, sine of 2x is 2 sine x cosine x. Cosine 2x is cosine squared x minus sine squared x. And you have two other alternate forms. And the half angle formulas on page 246, I would suggest just these. These are correct but you'll see this more often when you get to calculus. Since you're in pre-calculus, i.e. we're preparing you for calculus, you kind of want to use a version that is in most calculus textbooks, which is this, these two. Again, write this as sine squared x, cosine squared x. Okay, and yeah, don't worry about these. Uh, there's nothing wrong with them, they're correct, but I'm not holding you responsible for, uh, for products of sines and cosines. All right, solve the equation sine of 2x equals sine x between zero and two pi. <clears throat> so normally you don't wanna mix up a double angle with a regular angle. So that's where you use identity. So I use the identity sine of 2x is two sine x cosine x equals sine x. Subtract sine x in both sides. Factor out sine x, two cosine x minus one equals zero. So by the zero factor property, either this is zero or this is zero. Sine x equals zero or two cosine x minus one equals zero. <coughs> a little bit of algebra, this gives you cosine x is a half, add one, divide by two. Okay, sine controls the y coordinate. So I want the y coordinate to be zero. Well, that's here and here. Cosine x is a half, x coordinate is a half. So I just kind of go a half like that, and there's one angle here and one angle here, right? So it's here, here, and here. That's zero, pi, and two pi. And then I also have pi over three, and this angle over here would be five pi over three. Pi over three, 60 degrees. This is 300 degrees, five pi over three. So here are my five angles that make this a true statement. Okay, 41, two sine squared x plus cos x minus one equals zero. So we're mixing up sine and cosine. Let's try to change everything so you just have one trig function. That's easy to do because I know sine squared is one minus cosine squared x. So now there's only one trig function, cosine. All right, distribute two minus two cosine squared x plus cosine x minus one. <laughs> Combine like terms. Negative two cosine squared x plus cos x plus one equals zero. I usually like the square term to be positive. Make it positive by multiplying both sides by negative one. That's a little bit nicer. Two cosine squared x minus cosine x minus one equals zero. Okay, now I factor this stuff. Two cosine x, cosine x, one, one, plus, minus. You can check by multiplying it all back out. See, two cosine squared x minus two cosine x plus one cosine x, that is negative cosine x, and then minus one, okay. So again, by the zero factor property, if a times b equals zero, then either a is zero or b is zero. So I set this equal to zero, or I set this equal to zero. Yeah, a little bit of algebra, subtract one, divide two, cosine x is negative a half, cosine x equals one. All right, so on my unit circle, Cosine x coordinate is one, that's there, at zero and two pi. Cosine x is negative a half. On the unit circle, x coordinate is negative a half here and here. That's two pi over three and four pi over three. So my angles are zero, two pi over three, four pi over three, and two pi. Okay, and a reminder, since sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta equals one, 
I could subtract cosine squared on both sides. Sine squared data is one minus cosine squared data. And similarly, cosine squared data, if you subtract sine squared data on both sides, cosine squared is one minus sine squared data. Okay. So we needed to use that over here, it looks like. Okay. All right, I'm gonna go back and do some other problems that we have already seen. Going back to 4.7 number 11. How do I do sine of 13 pi over 12? First, let's figure out what quadrant I'm in. Okay. Pi is 12 pi over 12. So 13 pi over 12 is just a little bit beyond that. So I'm in quadrant three. Quadrant three, the S-I-G-N of the S-I-N-E is negative. So I know I'm gonna have a negative. <clears throat> okay, and you look at this and say, I don't recognize that angle. Yes, but if you double that angle, multiply by two, you have 13 pi over six. That's more recognizable. So 13 pi over six times a half is 13 pi over 12. So I can use the formula. And where is 13 pi over six? It's 12 pi over six, two pi, plus pi over six. So that angle is coterminal with pi over six, right over here. <clears throat> So again, if you, you see an angle you don't recognize, maybe double the angle. And then if you get something you recognize, you can use a formula. Okay. So 13 pi over six is once around two pi, 12 pi over six, plus another pi over six. So the angle would be like this, all the way around, then another 30 degrees. So what is this ordered pair? Again, I look at the X and Y coordinates. It looks like Y is halfway. X is more than halfway. So Y is a half, X is automatically radical three over two. Okay, so among other things, that means the sine of 13 pi over six is a half, cosine of 13 pi over six is radical three over two. Okay, so now I can use the formula. What is the formula? Sine squared theta equals one minus cosine two theta over two. So the angle that I want to find out goes here at 13 pi over 12, sine squared of 13 pi over 12 is one minus cosine of double this angle, 13 pi over six, all over two. Then I take the square root of both sides and I put a negative because I'm in quadrant three. So one minus cosine of 13 pi over six, the X coordinate here is radical three over two, all divided by two. Okay, so we have it. Sine of 13 pi over 12 is negative square root of one minus radical three over two divided by two, multiplied top and bottom by two. We've seen that trick before, and we've seen these numbers before. So the bottom just becomes square root of four, which is regular two. And this is negative square root of two minus radical three all over two. So that's my exact answer for sine of 13 pi over 12. Okay, okay then from 15, I'll do 15C, but all the rest pretty much work along with it. Tangent of T is 5 twelfths, sine of T is negative. So sine is negative, tangent is positive, we must be in quadrant three. Okay, tangent of T is 5 twelfths, sine is negative, quadrant three. Right, so among other things, we're asked to find a cosine of 2T Part A there. So formula for cotangent 2t is cosine squared minus sine squared. <laughs> okay, so how do I deal with this? I see tangent, I have the identity one plus tangent squared t equals secant squared t. One plus 5 twelfths squared secant squared t. Tangent t is 5 twelfths. 5 over 12 squared is 25 over 144. 
add one, which is 144 over 144, I get 169 over 144 is equal to secant squared. Take the square root. I want a negative because I'm in quadrant three. In quadrant three, the only thing that's positive is a tangent and cotangent. So negative 13 twelfths is a secant of t. Flip it. Cosine of t is negative 12 thirteenths. That's going to make the sine of t negative 5 thirteenths. Sine squared t plus cosine squared t equals one. Sine squared t plus, all right, cosine squared, we just did that sort of, 144 over 169. You square this, 144 over 169, subtract on both sides, 25 over 169. Square root, square root. We are in quadrant three, so the sine of the sine is negative. Sine of t is negative 5 thirteenths. So I'm ready. I've got cosine of t and sine of t. So at long last, I can figure out cosine of 2t. Cosine squared t minus sine squared t. So cosine squared t is negative 12 13 squared minus negative 5 13 squared. So that's 144 over 169 minus 25 over 169. Final answer, 119 over 169. It's a cosine of 2t. Okay, so there was a lot to that one. Let's see. Okay. Um, I got a request for 4.625. Let me go all the way back to that one. See, page 238, y equals tangent pi over two x. How do I graph that? So tangent pi over two x, this is my B. The formula for the period of the tangent function, it's not two pi over B, for tangent and cotangent, it's just pi over B. So it's pi divided by pi over two. If you divide by pi over two, you multiply by two over pi, pi is cancel out, period is just two. So how do I graph it? The period is two. So that means from the x equals zero, I go one each direction, one to the left and one to the right. And I know the way the tangent looks, goes with the origin, Three quarters of the way, I'm at one. One quarter of the way, I'm down at negative one. And it just goes like that. That's an idea behind these kinds of graphs. Okay. And I'm going to jump all the way back to 4.2. Four point two twenty seven was asked for. Four point two twenty seven, page two hundred. If P of T has coordinates negative radical five thirds, two thirds, find the coordinates of the point T plus pi, blah 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 blah. Okay. So how do I do that? So negative five, negative radical five thirds, two thirds, that's over here. So this is T. This would be negative T. Okay, P of T plus pi, that's 180 degrees off. So from 180 degrees off, you just change both of these signs. So it's positive radical five thirds, negative two thirds. P of negative T, that's over here. So I'm gonna have the same X coordinate, but the opposite Y coordinate. So that would be negative radical five over three, negative two thirds. 
C is going to have the same answer as A. <clears throat> okay. A, you add pi, you end up 180 degrees off. If you subtract pi, you're going the other way, but you're still going to be 180 degrees off. So same answer as A, radical 5 over 3, negative 2 thirds. And how about negative t minus pi? <clears throat> well, negative t minus pi is 180 degrees off of this. So negative t is here. If I subtract pi, I end up over here. So instead of both negative, they're going to be both positive. So the answer to d is radical 5 thirds, 2 thirds. And then going back, question about uh, 31, section 4.2. In a circle of radius three inches, an arc length of six inches has an angle theta. Find the measure of the angle in degrees and radians. So radius is three, arc length is six. I use the formula S equals R theta. Theta has to be in radians. Six goes here, three goes here, six equals three theta. That's very easy. Theta is two radians. <clears throat> how do I change that to degrees? Multiply by 180 degrees divided by pi radians. See, so how do I know it's that? Because then the radians will cancel out. If you went pi over 180, you'd have radians, radians, you wouldn't cancel out. So 360 over pi, punch it in your calculator, it's about 114.59 degrees. So I'm getting a lot of review in here in preparation for the test next week. Anyway, um, let's see, 37. The area of a sector of a circle with angle 45 degrees is two square feet. Find the radius of the circle. So area is two square feet. 45 degrees, I have to change that to radians. It's pi over four. Then use the formula area is one half r squared theta. <clears throat> Two goes here, one half r squared times pi over four. So one half times pi over four, that's pi over eight. Okay, multiply both sides by eight over pi. Gives me 16 over pi is r squared. Take the square root. So R is four over radical pi feet. If you punch it in your calculator, it's about 2.26 feet. So there we go. Jumping up to 4.4, 41, let's ask for. It's 219, 4.441. Find all values of t in the interval from zero to two pi that satisfies the given equation. Sine of t is negative a half. Sine controls the y coordinate. So I go down to negative a half. I see an angle here and here. That looks like a 30 degree angle as a reference angle. So that makes it seven pi over six. This is pi, which is six pi over six. Add another pi over six, seven pi over six. This is 30 degrees. So all the way around is two pi, which is 12 pi over six, back up pi over six, 11 pi over six. So my two angles are seven pi over six and 11 pi over six. Okay, and let's see, 4.6 number 11, let's ask for it. So doing a lot of review of old stuff. One point six, um, 11, page 238. Find the values of all the trig functions for the given information. Number 11, cosine of t is negative four fifths, t is between pi and three pi over two. <clears throat> That's in quadrant three, right, for number 11.
one, two, three. Okay, sine squared t plus cosine squared t is one. If you ever have the cosine, you can always find the sine and vice versa by using this. <clears throat> so sine squared t plus negative four fifths squared equals one. Negative four fifths squared is 16 over 25. Subtract one minus 16 over 25 is nine over 25. Square root, square root. I must have a negative because I'm in quadrant three. The sine of the sine is negative in quadrant three, so negative three fifths. Okay, I'm ready to do my little chart. Sine, negative three fifths. Cosine was negative four fifths. Tangent is the ratio, so that divided by that. Negatives cancel out, fives cancel out, three fourths. And flip, flip, flip. Flip the sine, cosecant, negative five thirds. Flip the cosine, secant, negative five fourths. And flip tangent, three fourths, four thirds for cotangent. Okay, let's see, 13. 13, tangent of t is two. t is between zero and pi over two, that's in quadrant one. So for this, I would use one plus tangent squared equals secant squared. One plus two squared is four, secant squared. So that's five equals secant squared, take the square root. I'm in quadrant one, everything's positive. So secant of t is radical five. Then reciprocate, flip both of them. Reciprocal of the secant is the cosine. Cosine of t is flip radical five, one over radical five. And of course, once I have that, you can always find the sine. It's a sine squared of t plus cosine squared of t is equal to one. Sine squared t plus one over radical five squared equals one. One over radical five squared is one fifth. Subtract one fifth, one minus one fifth is four fifths. Square root, square root. I'm in quadrant one, so no need for the negative. Square root of four is two. So sine of t is two over radical five. Once you have that, I think the rest falls in place. Well, actually, you already have everything. Yeah, so I have the sine, cosine, and tangent. So flip, 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 and you got all six. So I don't need to go with that. You can figure that one out on your own. Okay, 4.627. That one was a little bit more tricky. Four point six twenty seven. Y equals tangent of two x minus pi over two. Okay. First, we factor out the two. So if I factor out a two, this becomes x minus pi over four. If you have to multiply by two by Factor you have the two, then you divide by two or take half of pi over two, pi over four. And again, if you're not convinced of that, multiply it by out. Two times x is two x, two times negative pi over four, negative pi over two. So the period is pi over b, which is pi over two, which ordinarily means if I cut that in half, I would go from negative pi over four to pi over four. So here is tan 2x. But because of this, there's a translation. Okay, so let's see. Actually, I'm not sure. Do I have this right? Um, it's supposed to go pi over 4 to the right. So one period should be 0 pi over two. So if I add pi over four, add pi over four to negative pi over four, you're at zero. Pi over four plus pi over four is two pi over four, pi over two. See, I mean, technically what I have is correct, but I should have done this way. So 
something more like that. But this one is also pi over four. So that's zero. And this becomes pi over two. And this becomes negative pi over two. So you could read that very easily. But there we go. Okay, so that was tying some loose ends from previous sections. Um, one more proof to show you would be 37 from today's section. And then I'm going to be done after this. So I'll be done in a couple of minutes. If anybody else wants to ask a question, you may. And we're finished for today. Thirty-seven. Prove secant x minus cosine x equals sine x tan x. And here's the way I want you to do the proofs. Draw yourself a line from the equal sign. It's an impenetrable barrier, which indicates you're not allowed to cross. Okay, typical strategy is change everything to sine and cosine. So secant is one over cosine x minus cosine x. This is sine x times tangent of sine over cosine. So this is sine squared x over cosine x, and that's about as good as it gets. So we'll leave that alone, see if I can force this. One over cosine x minus cosine x. Common denominator is cosine x, and so multiply this fraction by cos x over cos x. So I get one minus cosine squared x over cosine x. And I know that one minus cosine squared x is equal to sine squared x. So there it is. So I got these two to match. So end of proof, that takes care of that. Okay. All right, so I think I'm pretty much done with the section and I went back and reviewed some previous stuff. So I think tomorrow we can get started with 4.8. So, which originally wasn't gonna be started until Monday, but I have to do 4.9 also. So leave myself enough days to see what's going on here, okay. All right, so let me check the chat. Uh, 4.723 is asked for, okay. Let's see what that's about. Okay. Cosine squared of two X, we write it using a half angle formula so that you don't have a square basically. Okay. Four point seven twenty three. You write it like this. It's cosine squared two x. Okay, so the formula I'm using is cosine squared of theta is one plus cosine two theta over two. So if I go from here to here, I double the angle. Okay. So one plus cosine, double the angle behind my finger over two, right? To go from here to here, you double the angle. <clears throat> so how do I double two X, four X? There we go. That's basically all you have to do for that one. All right, uh, anything else, please? So let me stop the share and check the chat. Otherwise, we'll fit in for the day. Okay, I think I've caught up with the chat. Any other questions, please? Otherwise, we're done. All right, that'll do it for today, folks. So have a good day, and we'll see you next time. Okay, all right, bye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.